Good afternoon, everyone. I'll call the meeting to order for the December 14th City Council. Before we get started, I want everyone to know that Roman, Roman numeral 13, matters which council members have asked to be placed on a future agenda, has been pulled from the agenda, along with the closed session, which is item uh, Victor Alpha VA, has also been pulled. Madam Clerk, roll call. The record will reflect that all members of council are present. Thank you. Now is the time for the invocation by Reverend Canon Cindy Evans Voorhees, St. James the Great Episcopal Church. Please stand. Let us pray. Creator of the world, we pray for a fair and collaborative leadership as a new mayor and mayor pro tem are selected for our beloved city tonight. We pray for thoughtful discernment for the many decisions that will be made this coming year that will affect the citizens of our community. Help us to act with character and conviction, to listen with understanding and goodwill, and to speak with charity and grace. We give thanks for the life of Patricia Griffith, founder of Soul Center OC, and all the good works she fostered. Give us a spirit of service this holiday season and guide us to treat all persons no matter their station in life, with reverence. Amen. Mayor Pro Tem Muldoon will lead us in the pledge. Thank you. Please uh, place your right, or hand, uh, right hand over your heart and repeat after me. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, for our first order of business, Council Member Brenner will discuss uh, what this presentation is for that we have coming up, and then I will present certificates in recognition for life saving measures. So please. Okay. Um, on behalf of the City of Newport Beach, Mayor Avery, and the City Council, I would like to recognize the following individuals who saved the life of a member of our community and who is a dear friend of mine, Patricia Griffith. Um, we we know that we save lives all the time in, in our fire department, and we have a wonderful record. In fact, Chief Boyles was telling me about how exemplary our record is when we can get to people in time to, um, especially if it's a heart issue, to save their life. In this case, this was something that happened at our community youth center three Sundays ago. And there were so many people involved in this life-saving event that we wanted to do a special recognition for all of them. Um, so on the morning of Sunday, November 14th at the Community Youth Center in Cronomar, recreation leader Barbara Valladolid found Patricia Griffith unresponsive on the floor of the facility. She quickly summoned recreation martial arts instructor Rick Bradley and Soul Center community member Brian Sherrick to assist. Rick Bradley performed CPR for quite a long time until our paramedics were uh, able to arrive. Together, they all called, they called 911, started CPR, and initiated life-saving measures with the use of an AED. Paramedics and fire personnel arrived shortly and took over the life-saving efforts. Their quick actions, skills, and courage saved Pat Patricia that Sunday. We were very excited to um, plan to have her here with us this evening. She did come home from the hospital. We had three amazing weeks with her. And um, during that time, it was extraordinary the amount of gratitude that she expressed for all of you and just for everything about her life. I introduced her to ginger beer, and you would have thought it was the best thing that ever happened in the world. Um, she was grateful for everything. She had a constant smile on her face. She made all of us who were able to spend time with her, visiting with her, feel like we had been given the greatest gift. Um, she was at my house for a week, and then she went to her daughter Jessica Susselick's house with her precious grandchildren, where they were able to have two days together and um, 
just the best time. Jessica tells me they laughed and, and had the best time while they were there. And, um, and then, unfortunately, um, that Friday, two days after she went to Jessica's house, she had another event with her uh, defibrillator, and our paramedics were called again. One of the same, uh, Drew, one of our paramedics, was the same one who had been there on that Sunday morning. They came out, they, they saved her, and they got her back to the hospital, and um, she was there for a couple of days, and then she did pass away. So we are extremely sad about this, but we are so grateful to the people on our staff and our, our paramedics that did such a great job because you gave all of us who know and love her the greatest gift for those extra days that we were able to share. If we could join um, me in a thankful recognition of this life-saving event, and I ask that Barbara Valadola, Rick Bradley, Brian Sherrick, Fire Captain Adam Novick, Fire Engineer Keith Hedenberg, and Paramedic Jeremiah Martin, Paramedics Jeremiah Martin, Drew Cafford, and Mike Zaccaro come forward to receive your certificates of recognition. Okay, if I can get a power. Yes, thank you. Sure. Yeah. Just want to say, uh, my wife's best friend is Jessica, and she's very close to Patricia. We're so sorry for the loss, and we'll be adjourning this evening in her honor. And um, 
obviously every moment does count. This is a true testament to that. It's quite a few moments that were gained. So thank you very much to our first responders and other heroes of the day. And of course, our uh, condolences to the Griffiths and Suslicks. Thank you. I think we can move right on to uh, agenda item number 10 since we're not going to have a closed session this evening. Right. Notice to the public, the City Council of Newport Beach welcomes and encourages community participation. Public comments are generally limited to three minutes per person to allow everyone to speak. Written comments are encouraged as well. The City Council has a discretion to extend or shorten the time limit on agenda or non-agenda items. Public comments are invited on agenda and non-agenda items generally considered to be within the subject matter jurisdiction of the City Council. Speakers must limit comments to three minutes. Before speaking, please state your name for the record. Thank you. Now we'll have public comments on agenda and non-agenda items. Take your poison. All right. Um, what up, Council? My name is Chad Kroger. So my dog JT and I made a really sick discovery that we think will be a pretty massive boon to the community. Uh, Schmoles love Catalina Island. First, let me clarify that a schmoll is a dude with a good heart who kind of sucks. Um, every crew has a schmoll. Statistically speaking, there's probably one schmoll on this council. Sorry. Um, and recently, the schmoll of our squad, Kevin, went to Catalina Island, and he loves it there. He actually just sent us a video of him humping the statue of a seal. So, yeah, he's exactly where he wants to be. And since the Schmoll has been gone, life without him has been really, really sick. And we had this epiphany. What if we sent all the Schmolls to Catalina? I mean, think about it. That would be so good for them and great for us. But here's the thing, Council. Not all Schmolls know that Catalina is a Schmoltopia. So we think it'd be really sick if you guys could provide some like incentives for them to want to go there. Uh, my colleague, JT, will provide further clarification. And thank you so much. I love you. What up, Council? My name is JT Parr. We are pumped you support our initiative to change Catalina into Schmoll Island. Here is our proposed tax incentive for Schmolls. Zero sales tax on all purchases of Crocs or crypto. Zero sales tax on renting Donnie Darko, American Sniper, or the Joker. One free acoustic guitar. Also, we want you to build a statue of Joe Rogan for them. But honestly, we should probably build one on the mainland too. His interviews are really great. We plan to personally speak with Catalina businesses and have them sign up for our Schmoll program. Don't worry about how to identify the Schmolls. We've designed green bandanas with QR codes that will scan so they can redeem their discounts. I have a photo of said bandana on my mom's iPad. It's not pulling up because I'm not connected to the Wi-Fi. Uh, I'll send it to you later. It's, a, it's lime green. It looks really good. Thank you. <coughs> Do we have any other uh, public comments on agenda or non-agenda items? I 
excuse me, I'm not, um, can I speak about the election of mayor and mayor pro tem at this time or should I wait? Uh, you, probably best to just wait until we get to that. We're gonna have a special opportunity to comment on okay, those items. Thank you. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear very well. If I had a comment about Mayor Pro Tem, should I wait? Yeah, so we're going to have uh, comments on that right before the item. Good evening. My name is Laura Curran, Corona Del Mar. I'd like to invite all of you to join Corona Del Mar in Light Up Corona Del Mar. The Corona Del Mar Residents Association, under the sponsorship of Joy Brenner and the Residents Association, is sponsoring a decorating contest. So if you live in Corona Del Mar, in the Flower Streets, but also in any neighborhood, up in Harborview, in Jasmine, in the Shore Cliffs area, in the Cameo Shores or Cameo Highlands, we encourage you to participate. Then have a party and invite your friends to come tour the houses of Corona Del Mar. Balboa Island is a standard that we realize um, is world-class, but we think we can provide a good alternative, um, especially it's boat parade friendly. So if you come down MacArthur, avoid the boat parade traffic, and you can look at the houses in Corona Del Mar. If you enter as a resident, prizes are $200, $150 for local restaurants, and I think some of them are over at Rogers Gardens and some of the local places that you all enjoy. So I know Council Member Brenner will be out there looking at the lights, and I hope that we see some of you um, over the next week and a half as well. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other comments on agenda or non-agenda items? Seeing none, now is the time for council announcements on oral reports from council members on committee activities. Councilmember Brenner, do you have any announcements or reports? I just wanted to report that Diane and I, and maybe the rest of you were at the Corona Del Mar Christmas Walk this weekend too, but Diane and I were there and we were talking to the people from the Newport Beach Historical Society, and I believe we have a photograph that was they had on display there, and this was from when they blocked the freeway that was supposed to go down Fifth Avenue in Corona del Mar. There was a lot of memorabilia there. Um, the the one next the other picture next door is of one of our residents who is working for a non not working just volunteering for a nonprofit called One Tree Planted dot org. So our fire personnel went over there to talk with her and look at the different fires throughout California that they had different ones participated in. This is an organization that helps to replant trees for um, for the ones that are lost in all of the fires. Um, the only other thing I have to report is that yesterday um, Duffy, Diane, and I are on the ad hoc committee about the group homes, the sober living homes. We've had several meetings with elected officials, with their representatives. Yesterday, we were on the phone for about two, two and a half hours for Assembly Member Cotty Petrie Norris is chair of the Assembly Accountability Project. And she had the leaders of DHCS and the state organizations that are supposed to manage these group homes there to report back to us on why we're not seeing them crack down on the people who are violating the rules and the people who are making it impossible for our neighbors to live near them and are also creating environments that are not safe for these people who are trying to recover from addiction. It was a sobering, sobering couple of hours um, I don't know that we felt like the problem was close to being solved, but we at least felt like at least they're talking about it. And what we were able to say in our comments, one of my comments was, if you're not going to adequately regulate this industry from Sacramento, where all of your inspectors are, then you need to give the regulation ability back to the cities, the communities where these homes are located, so that we can regulate them and we can enforce um, to make sure that people are receiving the kind of care that they have been promised when they 
um, are enticed to come to these sort of facilities. So it was a it was a fascinating um, meeting, and I know there's going to be a lot more to come from this, but we're going to be continuing to put the pressure on from our from our side to try and make sure that they either are accountable, make sure that these people are accountable, or give us the ability to make them be accountable. Thank you, Councilmember O'Neill. Um, also, I'll show some slides at our next meeting, but the uh, TCA met for, all of the boards met for a uh, discussion last week uh, to talk about ways we can uh, move forward in the next five to seven years as boards. Uh, Newport Beach sits on the San Joaquin board. Uh, I am the Newport Beach representative on that. I sit as the vice chair of the San Joaquin, or the uh, full agency's finance committee and vice chair currently is of the San Joaquin board. They just went through refinancing on, the, on some of its debt, uh, and they expect the, um, the refinancing to save, without extending the maturity dates, $138 million worth of interest over the life of that debt. Uh, and we also made a decision um, at least to move forward with a refunding strategy uh, as they come up, as some of the bonds mature in 2025 that uh, should save an additional $300 million over the life of that uh, interest as well. So a, um, there's a lot of good news. I, I'd like to show people actually a little bit more of what we actually did, but the, uh, that's, that's positive. Thanks. Thank you. Ms. Dixon. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I think I have a slide coming up next. On, I'm pleased to give an update on the Be Well Mobile Health Unit. And uh, we've been talking about this as a council and the city managers talked about this. This is kind of the last leg of the stool on dealing with our homeless uh, situation, the challenges and the mental health aspect of our homeless needs in the community. And so I'm pleased to report that Be Well OC Mobile Crisis Unit is gearing up and being almost ready to serve. The program will deploy a team of trained professionals to address mental health crises in the community, including residents, visitors, and people experiencing homelessness. A retrofitted van arrived last week at Be Well OC campus in Orange, and Be Well OC will staff the van with a licensed mental health professional and a paramedic working 12-hour shifts seven days a week. They will coordinate closely with our police and fire departments. City staff is participating <coughs> in weekly meetings with BYOC to ensure a smooth rollout and a, an effective program. Funding for the initial year comes from a one-time anonymous donation of $132,000 for the new van, along with federal funding from the CARES Act and community development block grants. BYOC is building a dedicated Newport Beach team, and we expect them to be in action serving our community early in the new year, and this will really um, be an effective uh, resource, uh, actually essentially outsourcing from the police having to do these same functions, and this is appropriately handled by mental health professionals, so there's obviously coordination uh, between the two. So it, it's coming to fruition, and it's really going to be exciting, and so we'll have more to report next month. Okay, as far as my Activities, just a couple of things to run down the list. The Sister City Association Christmas Breakfast. I attended briefly, but I wanted to show my support because that's such a great organization. And uh, during COVID, the Sister City organizations in Japan and France have been in hiatus, obviously, because the exchange program, the high school student exchange program, was not uh, operating because of COVID. And so they're anxious to get hopefully soon, uh, get, resurrect the exchange program, which is really a, a fantastic program for high school students in Japan coming here and France coming here and our students going to both countries. Um, just to echo what Councilmember Brenner said yesterday, uh, Duffy and, my, and uh, Councilmember Brenner and myself were on the hearing. And I, I think, um, I believe, that I, this, we're on the cusp of some important uh, changes that will come forward in the next legislative session to address some of the enforcement gaps that apparently don't exist in state law. And as we've said many times up here recently, because of the incident that happened up in Santa Ana Heights last August, uh, ironically, these state licensed facilities, which the city cannot regulate or 
regulate. These are state licensed facilities that really aren't regulated by anyone. There are, nor are they certified, as we learned yesterday. There are more certification requirements to be a manicurist uh, than there are to treat uh, addicted people, youth or adults. And uh, the enforcement has to change, and this requires state law. Uh, one of the points I made as well was uh, the state is oblivious to uh, the neighborhood impact of uh, approving licenses for homes in our neighborhoods right next door to each other. There should be what we call distancing requirements, so there are only... Uh, there, well, there's distancing between facilities, so there would not be more than two on every block. So this is a concern that's rising, and we're on top of it. And the ad hoc committee is working with the state uh, assemblywoman, Petri Norris, and our supervisor, Katrina Foley, be, uh, because the county is involved in this too. So we've brought, and the uh, district attorney's office. So we have all the critical players talking to one another and working on proposed legislative solutions. So that's positive. And then before the day was over last night, there was another meeting up here of another ad hoc committee, and that's our redistricting ad hoc committee. And maybe uh, the mayor, Mr. O'Neill, wants to comment on this. Uh, but we're moving forward, and we will be bringing the ad hoc committee's recommendations to the city council. When will they be coming back to the city council? In January. I think, what did we agree, January, I think, recommendations from the ad hoc. So stay tuned for more of that on, as you've all heard, uh, congressional districts, state legislative districts, and our city council districts, all because of the 2020 census, every 10 years, the districts are uh, to be realigned. And so we are on schedule to complete that process. And I think that's great. That's all. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Blom. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> they did a lot this past week. Um, amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I also got to attend the Christmas walk. Um, I got to do it twice, once early in the morning and then again later in the afternoon. We took a brief hiatus up to Long Beach with the Newport Aquatic Center to watch our teams row up there. They did exceedingly well, winning multiple medals. It was awesome to see them back in the water. It was for their Christmas regatta, so many were in full dress rowing their, um, as fast as they could with, with little Christmas hats on. But um, it's been a beautiful week. It's been so nice to see everything turning so festive and bright. I know we're getting all the decorations out. The Little Island is getting set, as well as uh, Marine. And it's been so wonderful to see the peninsula turn on as well. So I think we're all looking forward to a beautiful and happy holiday. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Duffy. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to thank um, Joy and Diane for coming to helping me through this. It was my district where the incident took place and the sad uh, passing of a, a young man. And uh, I have to say, I couldn't have done this. <laughs> you guys really dug down, and, and I, I do believe we are making some pretty good headway. It's kind of exciting. and. Uh, but clearly, without your without you guys helping me, uh, we couldn't have gathered the the community, and all the state officials and and the um, county officials. I think we're making some real good headway. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Muldoon. Yes, the slide for me. Thanks, Elani. Okay, it's a weekly reminder about Operation Christmas. The city is collecting new toys, DVDs, and sports equipment now through 12 p.m. on December 22nd at all public city facilities. Donation drop-off locations include the Civic Center, Oasis Senior Center, Newport Coast Community Center, Marina Park, Newport Beach Libraries, all of them, the Newport Beach Fire Stations, and Newport Beach Police Department. Uh, please consider being generous this Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. I think I have a couple of slides, too. Oh, right. So last week, uh, I met with Eleni Kunalakis, and she's California's uh, lieutenant governor. And uh, she was here at the Civic Center to remotely conduct a state lands commission meeting. And she serves as one of three members on, of the commission. And so uh, Mr. Uh, Webb, our director of public works, was sharp enough to... Uh, get with her staff and get 20 minutes um, 
so we could uh, picture on some of our uh, needs with the harbor in our areas uh, where we have, um, where we're joined uh, with state lands. Um, and so uh, we had a good productive 10, 15 minutes and um, she's now establishing an office down here in Southern California and, and that's I think very good for us. So just made the effort to have contact and um, just introduce her with broad overview of some of the issues uh, with state lands and where uh, we could work together and uh, do some uh, great things for our beaches and harbors, other areas where state lands are connecting with our city. And then on um, recycling, uh, this is kind of a big deal for those that are not aware of it. I suspect most people aren't because there's a lot of other things in life to be paying attention to. Um, but um, for those of you that have been with us in the council chambers, um, you notice that the trash and recycling carts and information poster on the display in the back room. I think they're right there. And uh, so it's part of this education process. So beginning in January, a new state law will require all Californians to recycle organic waste, including food waste and green waste, along with standard recycling materials. And this is going to be a big lift for our town. I know many of you are recycling already, but I think the vast majority of folks in Newport Beach uh, don't recycle. And um, so this is going to require a little learning, certainly in, in, uh, in my kitchen as well, just dividing up things into three separate uh, cans in the kitchen. Um, Early in the new year, uh, Newport Beach households will receive a green top cart for organic recycling. That's every household, which includes leaves, grass, and yard waste. It won't be in the can. You have to put it in there, but uh, along with food and kitchen scraps. So uh, every household will end up with three different carts, one for landfill trash, one for standard recycling, and one for organics recycling. You will also receive a two-gallon kitchen pail, and I'm looking forward to this to help with food scrap recycling right on the counter. <laughs> and as we roll out organic recycling, the city is building efficiencies into our trash and recycling collection system to help cut down on truck traffic and air pollution. So these are all good things. As a result, you may see your collection day changed. Change is good. And we will notify you in advance if your household will have trash and recycling pickup on a different day. Let's hope that happens. You will be getting more information on these changes in the coming weeks and months. Please be on the lookout for a direct mail newsletter that will be delivered to all residents before the holidays. So in the next week. You can also visit one of the informational displays here at the Civic Center, the Central Library, the Corona Del Mar Library, Mariner's Library, Marina Park, Oasis Center, and Newport Coast Community Center. So I encourage all of you to get more information and facts on our city website at newportbeachca.gov slash recycle. And uh, this is a big lift, I think, for everybody, including our, um, our uh, operators, uh, waste operators, city. Um, the, the outreach has been big already, and it's, it's got to continue. But it's going to make a huge difference um, in uh, many levels for the environment and for our city. Um, and it will, I think, re reduce um, congestion in the neighborhoods as well. So it's actually pretty exciting stuff, but um, please be patient and um, good luck with your kitchen counter two gallon bin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll move on here. Madam Clerk. Could you please read the notice on regarding public comments on consent calendar? This is the time in which council members may pull items from the consent calendar for discussion. Those are items 1 through 11. Public comments are also invited on consent calendar items. Speakers must limit comments to three minutes. Before speaking, please state your name for the record. If any item is removed from the consent calendar by a council member, members of the public are invited to speak on each item for up to three minutes per item. All matters listed under consent calendar are considered to be routine, will all be enacted by one motion in the form listed below. Council members have received detailed staff reports on each of the items recommended in action. There will be no separate discussion of these items prior to the time the City Council votes on the motion unless members of the City Council request specific items to be discussed and are removed from the consent calendar for separate action. Thank you. Councilmember Brenner, do you have any items to pull from the consent calendar or conflicts to announce related items 1 through 11? 
Councilmember O'Neill? Councilmember Dixon? None. Councilmember Blom? None. Councilmember Duffield? I have none. Councilmember Muldoon? It's like the lot. Lodge a no vote on item five. Thank you. And I have none. Mayor Pro Tem. Yes, I have a motion, Mr. Mayor. Is there a second? Uh, may I make it? Okay. Yeah. I'm sure there will be a second because it's going to be really right. good. Yes. <laughs> I move items of one through 11 with change to the minutes by staff and no vote on item five by myself. Great. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We will now have comments on consent calendar items one through 11. Mayor Avery, members of the council, my name is Jim Mosier. Uh, to be sure, this actually isn't a consent calendar item, but since it was treated as if it was, it seems fair to comment on it. We just heard in detail about a new trash program, and I wanted to point out that has not been on a consent calendar or any calendar, and in fact, the council has not endorsed or voted on that program yet. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional comments? from the public on this particular item, seeing none. Council, any further comments? <coughs> Ms. Dixon, I see you're ready to vote, okay. Prior to reading the vote, I'll read the ordinance titles for items three through five. Ordinance 2021-26, an ordinance of the City Council of City of Newport Beach, adopting Local Coastal Program Amendment 2019-1, amending Title 21 Local Coastal Program Implementation Plan to correct and clarify provisions related to minimum lot size and dimensions, overlays, and public hearing notice requirements. Ordinance 2021-27, adopting zoning code amendment CA 2020-2 to amend Title 20, planning and zoning of the Newport Beach Municipal Code related to tattoo establishment uh, development standards and Ordinance 2021-28, Amending Chapter 5.95, Short-Term Lodging Permit and Title 21, Local Coastal Program Implementation Plan of the Newport Beach Municipal Code related to short-term lodging and adopting Local Coastal Program Amendment LC 2020-7 related to short-term lodging and Local Coastal Program Amendment LC 2020-8 related to short-term lodging on Newport Island. The motion carries unanimously, 7-0. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna have a 10-minute recess. We're good? All right. Sorry. But I think the next item will be uh, public comments regarding the reorganization. Great. So this is the time for those of you who come with public comments about the reorganization. Brad, could I make a brief statement before the public comments about this? Yes. Um, I just wanted to say that I, um, I spoke to a group of my supporters about a week ago, and unfortunately I don't have ultimate control over my supporters, but um, I did request that they not attack Council Member um, Blum and that this item be considered on the basis of the principles of uh, how we structure our, our leadership on the council and the fact that we've received so many personal, um, personal emails from people, I, I feel sort of like um, I attended my own funeral when I got to hear what people really thought. So from that standpoint, I'd like to say thank you very much. And I'm sure Noah appreciates the, the um, complimentary emails that he received, but this really is not about Noah or me. This is about the structure of how we do our leadership on the council. And um, if anyone does listen to me, who is one of my supporters and would please refrain from attacking Noah about this, I would definitely appreciate it. Thank you. Public, public comments now? Yes. Fantastic. Well, maybe I can set the tone, Joy. Um, <clears throat> the dais looks fantastic, and my name is Dennis Bress, um, resident of Balboa Island, beautiful Balboa Island, 
and beautiful Newport Beach. So I couldn't be happier to be here. I think this is the last meeting for the season for you guys. So I just wanted to reach out and say thank you so much. What a great team we've had uh, to lead our city through a very trying year. Um, you guys have been fantastic and ladies. Um, a lot of accomplishments that you guys have done. Uh, we did the partnership with City of Costa Mesa for homelessness. That was just monumental. That's doing great work. Um, what you brought up, Diane, in regards to the Be Well OC van coming into town, that's going to help uh, the police department out in order to have some qualified people really reach out to people that need help. Um, the John Wayne Airport, thank you to uh, Chair Dixon and Vice Chair Noah. Uh, we made some tremendous progress there. Um, the residents on Balboa Island have been able to really see some noticeable, tangible difference um, in the departures now, and that's because of our hard work that we've done on the AC committee. Also, with the help of uh, Supervisor Foley, uh, we're hopefully going to be able to stand up the Fly Quiet program soon, and that's the ultimate um, goal is to be able to have the owner and operator of the airport, the county, to have a mechanism that monitors every single flight and then categorizes those flights into either they did what we need them to do by going high and slow, therefore a quiet departure, or if they went low and fast that we reach out to them through an educational program to get them up to speed because they really want to be good um, neighbors in departing through our neighborhood. Um, we're pretty stoked that we got $5 million from DC. That's some serious money that came to the city. We get another $5 million uh, next year. Um, and uh, like I said, it's been a tough uh, year, but a very productive year. So a, a warm uh, extend to everyone here that works so hard. It takes a lot to be an elected official, especially through what we've been through. And thank you for everything you've done. So now I'll pivot uh, to why it is that I'm advocating that Joy be our next mayor uh, for the city of Newport Beach. I think Joy has put her time in. She has a full term. There's going to be some um, termed out uh, council members we're going to go through. Uh, that's going to be a change in having this um, uh, person who has worked very hard, uh, has integrity, has been a longtime resident within the city of Newport Beach. No one really personifies more. Um, you all bring very unique uh, characteristics to the leadership here for the council. Will, you did a great job. Uh, Mayor Avery, fantastic. And I'm just here to advocate that Joy be given a chance to lead our beautiful city as we move forward. So um, I would like nothing better than to um, have Joy Brenner be the mayor and the face for Newport Beach going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Avery and City Council. Uh, Joy, being the class act that she is, did tell all of us at a committee meeting to um, please do not take our three minutes to discuss Noah's indiscretions. So with that being said, let's focus on the one council member who epitomizes the essence of what community service and allegiance to her constituents is all about. Joy Brenner is a dedicated councilwoman and has served the city of Newport Beach in a variety of capacities. She has knowledge, earned respect, and an excellent grasp of her responsibilities as a representative of the people of Newport Beach and clearly deserves to be, as I feel, Mayor Pro Tem. Serving as a council member is a serious job. No one takes this more seriously than Joy Brenner. Having worked with many of you on city council, this is really important. I hope in your heart of hearts, you will do what's best for the city of Newport Beach, the city council as a body, and put self-interest aside and vote for Joy Brenner. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Uh, Mayor Avery, members of the council, my name is Jim Mosher. Uh, we've been invited to speak to you about your selection of the mayor and mayor pro tem. Under our charter, the mayor moderates the council meetings and also serves as the council's principal public 
spokesperson, which incidentally means that the mayor is expected to communicate to the public what the majority of the council has decided, not what he or she may personally think is best for the city. One of the main problems that has been identified <clears throat> with the current system is that changing the mayor each year diminishes the city's influence because of a lack of continuity in who speaks for it. As a result, a majority of you and apparently many city voters are promoting a charter amendment that would ensure that the mayor is not only, as he is now, a person who has been elected by the people, but also one who will serve for at least four years in a row and can be changed only by a vote of the people. To that majority and to the residents who support that elect our mayor amendment, I would like to make clear that there is no requirement anywhere for you to make any change today. Indeed, our charter's authors would be surprised you're even contemplating doing so, for they imagined the mayor and the mayor pro tem would serve at least two years, not requiring you to even consider a change until after an election at which new council members are seated. So if it is your sincere belief that our city needs continuity in its spokespeople, I would strongly suggest you make no change today and instead wait until next December, a year from now, when we have at least three new faces on the council and at which point the charter does require you to reconsider the leadership positions. That new council, if they think continuity is important, may choose to continue with Mayor Avery until he is termed out in 2024, or they may wish to select one of the new members who has the prospect of serving as their spokesperson for even more years in succession. The voters may also by then have put the elected mayor provision in our charter, which would indicate even more strongly that they want you to go for continuity rather than rotation. In any event, if you sincerely believe continuity is the key to the city's success, or if you think, simply think the charter's authors got it correct in setting a two-year term from election to election, then the obvious choice tonight is to make no change at all. Personally, though, I think rotation is good and two years is reasonable, and if you insist on making a change tonight, I would suggest joy for mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. I'd just like to say um, my wife would kill me if I did another term as mayor. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. Um, uh, my name is Mike Lekwa. I am a homeowner in the Flower Street area of Corona del Mar. And for background, I am a professor, a surgeon and professor in chief of the trauma center at UC Irvine for the last 26 years. Uh, I actually want to start off uh, by complimenting whoever made the comments. Thank you for what you do. Uh, I have uh, my time in this city. I think the work and the outcome of what you do, uh, the city is such a great place to live. I could not be happier. It is the envy of all of Orange County. As a life member and resident of Orange County, I'm telling you, you guys are doing a great job. So thank you. Uh, I'm specifically here to express my, sort, my, my support for Council Member Brenner, and I would request that the council choose her today to serve as a mayor pro tem. Uh, it has been many years since CDM has been represented, and I think it is uh, important for that role to be diverse and inclusive of CDM as, as, as with all parts of the city. I think that's one of the strengths and one of the reasons why the city has done so well. Um, moreover, I, I would like to point out that uh, uh, Ms. Brenner's life of service has been distinguished with so many selfless roles which are illustrated by her prioritization of the residents who live here. And I know that at different times that priority can change, but the res in the times that we are looking at now, there's so many difficult issues that impact our quality of life. And I'm seeing all of these issues, whether it be the ones that were brought up with this, you know, whether it's short-term rentals, whether it is these, you know, the, uh, the uh, rehab centers, whether it's offshore drilling, uh, et cetera, et cetera. These things impact us. And we need somebody who is going at this time to represent us, th the residents and their viewpoint. And I think this time uh, she is best suited for that. Uh, we've seen that with her work with the resident association, with the library, with the high school, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So um, with the complex and difficult times ahead, prioritization should be for us. 
uh, and to make a comment about structure, which is a little above my pay grade, but in just conceptually, I would like you to look at the success that you've had so far, and I will say that by changing, uh, by, you know, the, the current role, by having, it, I, think it, I think it brings diversity and it brings consensus by having a change. And while having one person may be good for that particular person to become more substantial, I also would say that that's not the priority and that is not the reason why this city is successful. It's successful because you represent the changing uh, views, ideas, and issues that come up for all of us. And that, so, so I think the model that you have actually is, is pretty good. So again, uh, please uh, give consideration and support for uh, Joy Brenner for Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is Charles Klob. Firstly, Mr. Mosher's uh, argument is compelling and worth giving some thought to. I hadn't considered it, although I did read his comments from today. Today you have the once a year opportunity to choose the mayor and mayor pro tem for 2022. The tradition would have suggested that Joy Brenner would be mayor, perhaps, and perhaps Will O'Neill mayor pro tem. While each council member has one vote, there are certain accommodations that the mayor is able to offer. I'm sure most folks who run for city council would like the chance to be mayor for at least one year in their term. Some, however, may not be able to devote the time necessary to fulfill the requirements of the position. Last year, you followed the tradition and elected Brad Avery mayor for 2021. Thank you for that. District 2 had not had a mayor for some time. I'm sure Mayor Avery can attest, as he just has, to how much time it takes to wear the mayor's hat this last year. Last year, you broke from tradition and elected Kevin Muldoon mayor pro tem. I've been impressed with how well he gets the consent calendar motion correct, <laughs> all the while abstaining from a myriad of things wireless. I expect it, I expect it is again his turn to be mayor. Joy Brenner is retired. Joy has, was passed over last year as mayor pro tem. She has the time and integrity to devote to the office. Joy deserves your vote tonight for mayor pro tem. I just saw a hilarious skit from the locals at Good Morning Newport. Perhaps you've seen it. I don't know how those guys managed to stay so timely. Check it out on Instagram and YouTube if you haven't seen it. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Hello, my name's Jennifer Irani, and I am speaking in support of Joy Brenner. I am also speaking to the city council, but to all the people that are watching me right now on uh, the news or whatever it is, the televised, that have asked me to come here and speak on their behalf. Um, there's a couple of things I don't understand. Kevin Muldoon, I don't mean to step on anyone's toes, and they've told me not to, but there are times when I have to speak up. I want to know why Joy Brenner has been serving for so many years here and city council and is terming out, you know, soon, and why she hasn't been the mayor or the mayor pro tem. Why all the men have served and Diane Dixon has been twice mayor, I believe. You're new, so you haven't been mayor yet. But why is she being looked over? And I want a good reason for that. And a lot of other people want it too. This is a time for women who have been committed, hardworking, showing up, speaking out, to be honored and to be given a voice. And if I have to speak like this in front of you to get it, I will. I'm holding every single one of you accountable for your vote tonight. I want to know why she will not be voted mayor. I should not be saying this. I should be saying mayor pro tem. But I'm tired of being told to step back, step down, be quiet. This is not the time to do it. Thank you. No clapping, please. Good afternoon, Mayor Avery and members of the council. My name is Nancy Scarborough. I'm um, here to show, support Joy Brenner for Mayor Pro Tem. I'm sure all of you have seen the overwhelming support in the letters written to the council and social media. Joy deserves the opportunity to serve in a membership role. I hope that you will listen to the residents and to respond by voting, f uh, electing Joy for Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi there, my name is Judy Wagner and I'm a 22 year resident of the Flower Streets. I'm here to show my support for um, electing Joy Brenner as mayor pro tem. You know, if you choose to pivot from the traditional 
way of alternating the mayoral selection process. You will not just snub Joy as a person or maybe as a political adversary. You will also, in effect, be snubbing the, elective rep the elected representative of every citizen of District 6, also referred to as Corona Del Mar. You cannot continue to marginalize every citizen of Corona Del Mar and District 6 and need to follow precedent. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good evening, Mary Avery, members of the council. My name is Denise Oberman. I'm here to support uh, uh, Joy Brenner also as uh, to ask that you consider to elect her or appoint her as mayor pro tem. Uh, I am not a resident of Corona Del Mar, and I do appreciate what the history is of the various districts or villages. But I think Joy has done something, as Diane Dixon and perhaps Willa Neal as well. Uh, but she has made a total commitment to our total city. And Newport Beach will not be sustainable if we don't pull together as a city. If we degrade into these little factions and we're fighting for those factions, we are not going to get behind and solve the problems and continue to evolve and continue to have this city be a great place to live, to work, to visit. So I am totally convinced that Joy is the best person uh, of those that I understand are being contemplated to serve as mayor pro tem and look not only to the interest of her immediate neighborhood of Corona Del Mar, but the interest of the city as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Sorry, Joy. Good afternoon. My name is Susan Skinner, and I'm here to ask that our city council consider how much negative press has occurred literally around the world regarding Mr. Blum's alcohol consumption and ask that we, that we avoid becoming more of a la laughing stock and not elect a mayor pro tem. The most interesting international site that discussed his drinking habits was a site for Manila prostitutes, and the most embarrassing site was the statewide California City site. All of this could have been avoided. Mr. Blum had used his common sense. Although he made a poor decision, you don't have to. Please do not make Mr. Blum mayor pro tem. Thank you. Next speaker, please. All right, seeing none, um, I have a comment. Uh, I will be supporting Ms. Blom for Mayor Pro Tem, uh, Ms. Brenner rather, and, um, but I wanna be clear, the reason why I'm doing it is I believe everybody up in this dais um, is qualified in my view to be Mayor Pro Tem and to be mayor. And I think all of the, everybody up here on this dais has contributed this year during my term as mayor to the, the success of this council, this body, and uh, in pretty difficult times, especially the first half of the year, working forward. We're all different, none of us are perfect. Uh, we all make mistakes. Uh, I certainly have this year, and um, it is so important to me that this body works together, and, uh, and I think we have been working lately to come together. We have different ideas, and we should have different ideas and uh, we come together, and I think we do a good job. And the only reason I'm supporting Ms. Brenner, because I agree with the speakers in terms of her commitment to this community and to this council, is because I do believe it is her, her, her turn, if you will. And this is not codified anywhere, it's just been sort of the tradition, and it's true some people have not uh, gone on to mayor pro tem, but in, in my view of this, uh, Ms. Brenner has done nothing to disqualify herself and certainly uh, has earned, I think, a consideration, serious consideration by council to be mayor pro tem. Thank you. May I take the gavel for a moment, Mr. Mayor? Oh, really? <laughs> just for a moment, no, no, this is not, it's not, not a change yet. I wanted to just acknowledge you.
You know, this is, this is the tradition to acknowledge outgoing mayor who's done a fantastic job. Uh, mayor Avery has been a calm and steady leader. Always kind and respectful to others, you have served the citizens and your colleagues well. We thank you and Julie for the sacrifices you both made over the past 12 months. It is my honor to present this to you, that for the entire council and the city of Newport Beach. Uh, this gavel is a, a symbol of justice and peace, which you helped oversee over the last year, and we thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. I've got just a brief couple of remarks. Um, I was thinking about it uh, the last couple of days, what being mayor meant to me, and uh, what it did was I'm a 50-year resident, so I moved to Newport Beach when I was 18, and um, with my parents, of course. Um, <laughs> there's no way to afford it uh, until you're about 50. Um, uh, I, I think uh, prior to this, I sort of took a lot of things in this city for granted. And so being on council, but certainly being mayor, where you get an opportunity to meet so many people, attend so many events, and you see how, how tightly woven this community is, the different groups, every, there's so much, so much civic con contribution, participation in this town. It's extraordinary, and people are passionate about this town. And um, that's something I didn't fully understand before, and, and now I do. So I'm, uh, I'm more appreciative than ever for being a resident, and that's my perspective. I'm just a resident who happens to be up on council, but to be a resident of the city and feel so lucky that I bought a home when I did and was able to get into this town. Um, and it's changing, and that's difficult sometimes, but most of the changes by far are for the better, and, uh, and that's, I think, due to citizen participation, people appealing to the council, coming to us, individually, collectively, call, phone calls showing up to meetings. I appreciate everybody that comes forward to this uh, to speak to council. It's not easy, and sometimes we see people are very nervous and apprehensive, and it takes a lot of courage, and it takes a lot of effort to come down to a meeting when you've got much better things to do to uh, bring up a concern of yours. So that's really um, important to, I think, everybody up on this dais, and certainly to me. And I also just want to communicate something. I think those of you that are uh, constant uh, council watchers um, probably have figured out that we have an extraordinary professional staff here at the city, starting at the top with Ms. Leung, Mr. Harp, Ms. Brown, and all the department heads. It's extraordinary. And that's another thing we all learn here on uh, up in councils when we meet with them and we just see the professionalism, the seriousness of which they take their jobs. And it is serious because this, we're, we're dealing with people's lives, their households, their businesses, and um, we try to have a little bit of fun, but it's, it's a business that we need to, um, to take seriously and, and move forward with. And uh, to that extent, um, we all have a responsibility to, um, for lack of a better word, uh, pay attention and uh, respond. And we're not always great at it. We have other things going on in our lives, and I go a day or two without returning a call. Sometimes I miss an email. It gets down to the bottom of my email box, and, you know, I just, um, the only thing I can do is apologize when that happens. But um, uh, it's an extraordinary honor to have been mayor of Newport Beach, and thank you so much. Appreciate it. And now we get to move on. So, Item number 13, the City Council will now consider the annual mayoral appointment, so I will turn the floor over to the City Clerk to conduct the mayoral election. Ms. Brown. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to. <laughs> this is the time for the election of the mayor. All members of the City Council are on equal basis to nominate and elect. Note that seven mayor and seven mayor pro tem nameplates have been created for the reorganization process. The same process will also be followed for the election of the mayor pro tem. Nominations do not require a second. They are not debatable, cannot be amended or reconsidered, and a majority vote is required to elect. The motion to close nominations does require a second. It is not debatable, cannot be amended or reconsidered, and requires a two-thirds vote. If there is more than one nomination, the voting will be done by paper ballot and the results 
will be read at the conclusion of the balloting. If there is only one nomination, the voting will be done by oral vote. Nominations are now open. Do I hear any nominations? Madam Clerk, it'd be my honor to nominate Mayor Pro Tem, um, Kevin Muldoon, to mayor. Are there any other nominations? I'll second. Do we have a, seeing no further nominations, there are a motion to close nominations. That was by Council Member Brenner. Um, is there a second to close? Council Member Dixon. By a show of hands, all in favor? At 7 0. Congratulations, <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Holden. Thank you. This is the time for the City Council to conduct the election of Mayor Pro Tem. Nominations are now open. Do I hear any nominations? Would you like to make a nomination, please? Yes, Council Member. Council Member Brenner for Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. And there's and there's no need for a second of these nominations. Do you have remarks before we take other nominations, Councilwoman? Yes, thank you. Um, frankly, I'd like to echo the, all the comments that were spoken just a few moments ago. Joey Brenner is a council person with immense integrity and high ethical standards. We've seen evidence of that throughout her uh, three and a half years or three years of service. Uh, I, too, would like to see the, to, that we continue the tradition to recognize members by seniority and years of service and contributions to public service uh, in our community, and she clearly has earned, earned that. And the point has been made that Corona Del Mar, her district, has not been represented in, for the position of mayor pro tem or mayor since 2012 when Nancy Gardner last served. And um, one of the speakers made a very important point that essentially it's uh, marginalizing the important residents, about 12,000 residents of that district. And I think it's important that Joy Brenner reflect that district as well as the entire city in her service. So I uh, make the motion to support her as mayor pro tem. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Do I have uh, any other nominations? For, yeah, for mayor pro tem, are there any other nominations? I'd like to uh, nominate <coughs> uh, Mr. Bloom for uh, mayor pro tem. Thank you, Mr. Duffield, and there's no requirements for a second. Are there any other, any, are there any other nominations? Seeing none, do we have a motion to close the nominations? I thank you. Do I have a second? Moved by Councilman O'Neill, seconded by Councilman Blom. We normally would do a show of hands, but because it's contested, we will do a ballot. In order to be selected, the council member must receive four votes. Council member Blom voted for council member Blom. Council member Duffield voted for council member Blom. Council member Avery voted for council member Brenner. Council member Brenner voted for council member Brenner with yellow highlight. <laughs> council member O'Neill 
voted for Council Member Blom. Council Member Dixon voted for Council Member Brenner. And Mayor Muldoon voted for Council Member Blom. So Council Member Blom, 4-3. Thank you. Uh, we now have the most uncomfortable point of the evening, which is the musical chairs, as we call it colloquially here. The remainder of the city council will seat themselves in the remaining seats. Per city, co city council policy A1, members of the council shall be seated at the city council table with the senior council members having first choice of seats. When there is no equal seniority among members of the city council, selection of city council seats will be made by the council member who received the highest margin of victory percentage in the most recent election. The seniority order are myself, Dixon, Duffield, O'Neill, Avery, Brenner, and Blom. Please take your new seats if you so choose. Dixon, then Duffield. I don't think Councilmember Dixon has moved, so Councilmember Duffield and then Councilmember O'Neill. Okay. Then Councilmember Avery. Then Councilmember Brenner. As I said, this is awkward. All, have all the name plates been changed? We didn't change them all this year. Would you, would you like to have them all changed? Um, so you just changed mayor, mayor, mayor pro tem? Yes. Whatever we but, traditionally do, we should do. All right. They're taking pictures, so I want people to think that <laughs> that, makes that uh, Joy is who she is and. Duffy and Will are who they are. <laughs> Thank you. First, I would like to thank my colleagues for their trust. It is truly the honor to have been selected again to serve as mayor, and this time even more so because you know what you're getting. Our last couple of years, we as a city have faced together historic challenges and unforeseeable obstacles. My hope as mayor is to lead a United City Council and a city into the new year full of new beginnings and blessings. In my mind, there is no stronger shared symbol for renewed hope than the celebration of Christmas time and the new year. I'd like to end by thanking my wife, Heather, for all of her support, my son, Cannon, for a new joy that only a child can bring. And there's one more person I'd like to mention this evening. Heather and I are happy to announce that we'll be expecting a baby girl in June. So thank you and Merry Christmas. Back to official business. Next on the agenda, motions for reconsideration. Madam Clerk, please read the announcement. A motion to reconsider the vote on any action taken by the city council, either this meeting or the previous meeting may be made only by one of the council members who voted with the prevailing side. Are there any motions to reconsider? We are adjourned in the memory of Patricia Griffith. 